This is an HP News Network special report. Okay, YouTubers and anti-nuke activists and conspiracy scientists. Okay, this is probably one of the most important videos I've ever done. What I'm going to show you in this video is quite shocking, but there's actual merit to my case. And I just want to let the evidence speak for itself. I'll try to keep my opinions to the minimum. Okay, let's look at this first screen capture. Two days before 9-11, military exercise simulated suicide hijack targeting New York. It was called Vigilant Guardian. Okay, a lot of you know about that. We got a lot of 9-11 researchers on YouTube. You guys know a lot more about these particular events than I do. I'm a Plumegate NRC Freedom of Information Act researcher, and that is my specialty, and that's what I know. But in so researching Plumegate and consorting with Shazam, another very high level researcher I acquired certain information that led me to believe that let's keep going Haiti disaster relief scenario was envisaged by the US military one day before the earthquake Southcom was doing a uh, hurricane relief scenario if my memory serves the day before Haiti has that massive earthquake let's move on Exact same drills on 9-11, London bombing, Oklahoma City. Coincidence? Again, I'm not necessarily endorsing or supporting any of these websites or articles. I'm just trying to show you a pattern. Next screen capture. Another official drill goes live after Texas fertilizer plant explosion. This one was fairly recent. Next screen cap. Colorado University had identical drill on same day as quote unquote Batman massacre. Next screen cap. Norwegian police conducted drill for quote unquote almost identical scenario minutes before Utoya massacre. Now, the screen cap you're looking at now is from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission Freedom of Information Act documents pertaining to Fukushima. And yes, what you're seeing is real, very real. On March 10th, 2011, the NRC had an incident response meeting convention, and it's exactly the same thing we've seen in this pattern. It's a it's a group. Well, let's go further. Let me let's look at an email from the NRC FOIA documents. This is what brought me back to this particular information. Okay, let's look at the bottom email first from Scott Burnell subject rumor control all Elliot that would be Elliot Brenner head of OPA just took a call from Platts asking about Japanese quote-unquote utility execs at headquarters responding to the quake the reporter said another Platts reporter had heard quote-unquote from the regions that this was the case while Elliot told Platts we are allowing Japanese regulators in big block letters to use our communications facilities as a courtesy the bottom line is that this topic is off limits for now. Refer any further questions on this to headquarters. Now up top it says, Elaine Hiruo, new Japanese industry is in town for RSC, but I didn't tell her they were at our building. Maybe they connected the dots. Now why are they hiding that fact that there's this incident response convention that is in town on March 10th, 2011, a day before the Fukushima disasters, folks? I am not a coincidence theorist at all. Let's continue. We're looking at a screen cap from the same document. I will provide this document for you and for all of you conspiracy scientists. I want you to have all the information I have. It needs to be at your disposal. You need to follow up on this video and do your own as you guys know a lot more about these things than me. I'm just adding to this pool of information. Office of Nuclear Security and Incident Response. Mission statement to prevent nuclear security incidents and respond to safety and security events. Vision statement to be a valued partner in Homeland Security, Federal Emergency Response. We know Homeland Security, DHS, and FEMA were basically inactive during this whole plume incident. FEMA was told to stand down. Department of Homeland Security played its part in covering up and hiding the effects of these multiple plumes, multiple radioactive clouds. In my last special report, I 
gave you guys a screen capture copy of the NPP nuclear power plant quote unquote rooftop grabs where they detected many nuclear plants over here, iodine, et cetera, et cetera, from Fukushima. Next screen cap, response plans, national response framework, nuclear radiological, so on and so forth, NRC incident response plan. What you see is this an emergency exercise training stakeholder outreach. It is a drill. It is a exercise one day before Fukushima. Okay, this next screen captures, I'm just going to kind of go through fairly quickly. NRC responsibilities, look at the bottom. Keep news media informed. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a joke, isn't it? If you've read my book, if you've read Fear and Loathing on Fukushima Unit 4, you know they did their best to conceal, to hide the effects of the radioactive plume, plutonium-laden aerosolized plumes that multiple times bombarded North America. Like I say, I gave a evidence of Lithuania detecting aerosolized plutonium in late March and early April. Keep other agencies informed, so on and so forth. Next screen cap, coordination with other agencies. Hey, to suppress this level of information, you have to coordinate with multiple agencies. My mom and I had a discussion the other day, and the discussion was if you could have freedom of information documents from EPA, FDA, DHS, any other agency, you would see the same things going on there as with the NRC. It's all about suppression and keeping information from the American public. Information that would save lives now, mind you, that would save lives. So look at their coordination with other agencies. DOD, mm-hmm, they're a big player in Plumegate. Department of Justice, they won't prosecute or issue a single indictment or subpoena, right? They're totally bought and paid for. EPA, they rigged the RADNET monitors. They took monitors down. Gina McCarthy got promoted for it. Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, was told to stand down. They did what they were told. It's called a stand down order. You don't do anything. Let the radioactive plumes hit. Keep your mouth shut. Department of Energy, they're the big dog players in this cover up. Department of Homeland Security, how can we have Homeland Security with all these nuclear plants around that are essentially massive payload capacity stationary bombs waiting for what? Let's continue this particular video because time is over you're going to know the point I'm driving at here expanded activation mode full incident response organization assembled this is huge this is incredible this is breaking news this has not been known to anyone that I'm aware of certainly no one has made a point to assemble this information and put it together in logical order and turn it over to the conspiracy scientists and let them have at it. And you guys do your videos, and you guys know what to do. This video isn't over yet. Let me give you some more information to bolster my case. Okay, look in the screen cap. Federal Emergency Response and Recovery. FEMA was told to stand down. They have no use. They have no value in this country. If I were to shut down alphabet agencies, I would start with DHS and FEMA, which those guys don't do anything, number one, and you already got Coast Guard, Army, Air Force, Navy, police forces, state and local police. Gosh, folks, we got enough incident responders now. They just won't use them. When something goes down, they cover it up and we suffer. Consequence management radiological response. This particular meeting was all about massive meltdowns and plumes. Fact, one day before the March 11, 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Okay, I'm just going to give you some screen captures here that, you know, it's taken directly from this document. You want to look into the document yourself and read through, saturate, understand, and then do your video putting all this together. We really want to get this out there because this is huge. This is the biggest thing I've done in a long time. Provide timely, high-quality predictions, measurements, analysis, and assessment to promote efficient and effective emergency response for the protection of the public from the consequences of nuclear or radiological events. Now, folks, what they actually do is the exact opposite of that. What these agencies are tasked with is very fascist by nature. It is to protect the corporate, to protect the government, to protect the money-powered influences, the establishment. They are not here to protect us historically. They never have been. Department of Energy Assets, Modeling. They, they have the National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center, NARIC. They did a lot of plume modeling during Plumegate. Okay, they're at their disposal. Radiation monitoring includes sampling analysis, consequent management, aerial measuring system, 
This was the drill. This was the exercise one day before the Fukushima disaster. I hope you guys understand how huge this is. I'm not a coincidence theorist at all. There is no such thing as long strings of coincidences that move someone's agenda forward into the future. We're going to talk about William Cohen in a minute and eco-terrorism. Okay, this screen cap, effective response is based on close collaboration with many agencies. And I put it to your response, that's cover-up. That's the suppression of information, the control of media, the control of government, the control of authorities. That's what that is all about. And it's proven in my book, Something Wicked This Way Comes. If you didn't know about the Plumegate cover-up, now would be a good time to do some research into it because you cannot fully understand the global predicament we are in with this criminal cartel until you research and understand and read my book on Plumegate. And then it's going to shock you. It's going to change. It's going to turn your whole world upside down for a week till you get a grip and then come to terms. And then you're going to join us. You're going to join us in fighting this nuclear power and against this criminal cartel, which is a global conspiracy. I've proven it. Complexity of response support. Look at the bottom where it says one plume, one response. Okay, plumes. Plumes one day before Fukushima. And I read you that email. They said, it's off limits. We don't talk about this. I don't know how they found out these guys were here, but you don't talk about it, right? Now let's talk about William S. Cohen. 1997, April 28th. He is being questioned at a keynote address at the Conference on Terrorism, Weapons of Mass Destruction, and U.S. Strategy at the Georgia Center. Now, what did he say that day? I'm going to read you the entire question and answer. It says, the questioner, the interviewer asks, let me ask you specifically about last week's scare here in Washington and what we might have learned from how prepared we are to deal with that inaudible at Benai Brith. Something happened in Washington that week, some kind of scare, terrorist threat, whatever it was. And here is then Secretary of Defense William S. Cohen's response. Well, he says, quote, well, it points out the nature of the threat. It turned out to be a false threat under the circumstances. But as we've learned in the intelligence community, we had something called, and we have James Woolsey here to perhaps even address this question about phantom moles. The mere fear that there is a mole within an agency can set off a chain reaction and a hunt for that particular mole, which can paralyze the agency for weeks and months and years even in a search. The same thing is true about just the false scare of a threat of using some kind of chemical weapon or biological one. There are some reports, for example, that some countries have been trying to construct something like an Ebola virus, and that would be a very dangerous phenomenon to say the least. Alvin Toffler has written about this in terms of some scientists in their laboratories trying to devise certain types of pathogens that would be ethnic specific so they could just eliminate certain ethnic groups and races. Okay, here's where it gets really good. And others, quote, William S. Cohen, quote, and others are designing some sort of engineering, some sort of insects that can destroy specific crops. Others are engaging even in an eco type of terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. Again, that is William S. Cohen from 1997, Secretary of Defense. He knows things we don't know, folks. Fact. I'm going to repeat this one more time, the critical sentence here, and let it sink in. Others are engaging, even in an eco-type of terrorism, whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes, volcanoes, remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. Now, just go back in your mind over the last few years, especially since Obama's been in office, volcanoes and earthquakes look into that okay next screen cap is from a another nrc freedom of information act document which goes into detail about incidences which happened at fort calhoun and north anna power station now initially when i looked at these i i had some information on fort calhoun that it might not have been a natural phenomenon that was occurring that was flooding the dams it was flooding fort calhoun i had reason to believe all the chemtrails that were sprayed the weeks preceding that had something to do with Fort Calhoun. And at that point in time, I shot a video, I saw some uh, abnormalities on the radar screen as I was doing like weather watching and whatnot, and I reported on that. I'm gonna give you a link to that as well so you can look at these strange abnormalities in the satellite uh, when these events occur. Now, in respect to North Anna Power Station, on 8-23-2011, 
Virginia earthquake, events at the North Anna Power Station, actions taken by NRC and Dominion, regulations and guidance for restart. They had to shut the plant down so severe was the earthquake. August 23, 2011. 1.51 p.m. Magnitude 5.8 quake strikes the east coast. Epicenter was 18 kilometers from the plant, 6 kilometers depth. 12 nuclear plants felt quake, one tripped North Anna. Largest recorded quake east of the Rocky Mountains since 1897. We, if you guys have noticed, we've had super storms breaking all records, tornadoes one mile wide breaking all records, largest hurricane, Sandy breaking all records. All these events, the chemtrail planes are spraying constantly. USGS reported that this was the most widely felt earthquake in U.S. history, Alabama to Canada and the East Coast to Illinois. Now, if you remember this earthquake, there's a lot of disinformation that came out with these crazy stories about underground bunkers and a nuclear bomb went off and the CIA was fighting this other faction, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, I'm giving you really good evidence that this is some type of cabal with advanced technology that has the power, as General Cohen said, I'm using his words, to set off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely. Now, if you look at this screen capture here, event location, look at the epicenter, and then look at North Anna Power Plant. Look how close of a target of a strike that was. That was dead on target. That was dead on target. And I am convinced myself that this is an organized effort to slowly degrade the environment on planet Earth. Who's doing it? Who's behind it? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just seeing it happen before my very eyes, and I intend to report on it to the best of my ability. Again, I'm asking all conspiracy scientists, of which I have great respect for, to take this information and run with it. I'm giving you something huge here that one day before Fukushima, all these Japanese utility execs were secretly at the headquarters of the NRC and they didn't want no one talking about it, right? I'm not a coincidence theorist. I'm going to continue to say that. What happened at North Anna Power Station? Earthquake occurs with both units at 100% power. Reactor trip breakers open for both reactors on negative flux rate trip. Loss of off-site power due to sudden pressure trips on off-site power transformers. All four diesel generators start to power the station. E-plan was entered and alert declared due to shift manager, manager judgment because seismic panel lost power. So it was a very serious earthquake with very serious repercussions at this station. It was a very close proximity, the earthquake, to the nuclear power plant. The licensee activated its technical support center, operations support center, and local emergency operations facility. Emergency diesel generator manually tripped due to coolant leak. One diesel generator didn't work. 2H bus re-energized by the station blackout. Station blackout diesel, off-site power available. So it could have been a lot worse. They had off-site power in Fukushima. They did not. In fact, in one of the emails, the guy says, look, we need to have multiple redundant power sources one from one side of the island, one from the other, and then he mentions another power source as well. So he wanted three power routes going into Fukushima. In event one was damaged, they still have electrical current, so you can affect repairs and take countermeasures. So unit one commence cool down, unit two commence cool down. So this is a very serious earthquake. Okay, the same year as Fukushima. And again, one day prior to Fukushima, Japanese quote-unquote utility execs are secretly meeting with NRC and they don't want people to talk about this. NRC actions, okay, it talks about what they did, inspections and went in, what have you. And we're going to look at kind of what they found when they went in. They say no significant damage to plant, but I would disagree with that. I would say there was some serious damage to the plant. Okay, this next particular screen cap, impact of North Anna, dry cask storage. You know, even if we shut all these plants down, even if 15 years from now we've cooled the fuel, it's dry cast, there's still potential danger in the dry casking, okay? So this is an extremely dangerous business. Even if we jump on this thing and get it handled and shut down, release suppressed technologies, we still have dry cast for thousands of years to worry about. And as you can see on this, it says 25 of 27 transnuclear vertical casks moved between one and four and a half inches. That is pretty incredible because if you look at the size of these casts, they're huge. They weigh quite a bit. Okay, now you're looking at a screen cap of the Unit 2 turbine building, and you're looking at this base pedestal platform that, you know, a serious piece of L-shaped uh, supporting metal structure is bolted to. And look at the cracks. Look at the rebar showing out from behind that concrete piece that's chipped off at the bottom. 
turbine building hallway. Crack and unreinforced non-safety related block wall. Look at that damage. Look at that damage. This earthquake was not as effective as whatever they did with Fukushima was a very effective attack. Probably a combination between your electromagnetics and your tsunami bombs. And we're going to talk about those. It's, I don't make that up. Tsunami bombs are real. Hey, I'm not the military guy. I'm in for peace and negotiations and compromise and getting along with everybody. I don't want to invent weapons of mass destruction. That's what our military does. Unit 1 containment. Look at the crack across the wall there. This is Unit 1 containment now. Surface crack and interior containment wall. Experience with Fort Calhoun nuclear station after 2011 flooding. I was on top of this one when it happened. And I had a good idea that these weather phenomena, someone is intentionally making these events happen. They're using a technology that the bulk of American citizens are totally oblivious to. You cannot go to a university and learn about this. You cannot find out about it on TV. This is very select knowledge that is not made available to the public. It is suppressed. It is, in fact, actually suppressed. Missouri River dams and flooding. Events at the Fort Calhoun site. Action summary. You know, while I'm thinking about it, when authorities talk about a terrorist attack to nuclear plants, what I'm telling you here in this particular lecture, in this video, they don't talk about. Interestingly enough, there's a complete lack, devoid of conversation in regards to what William S. Cohen said, remotely setting off earthquakes. They don't want to talk about this because none of our nuclear plants could withstand what Fukushima went through, period. Okay, in this next screen cap, you see all down the Missouri uh, River there. You see all these particular dams and what have you. And then you have Fort Calhoun and Cooper below all of these dams. This, if this was a target, this would be an excellent target, just like Fukushima, because of Unit 4, Unit 3, the MOX fuel, the offload into Unit 4. Perfect target. Perfect target. And look at these two right here, positioned perfectly beneath all these massive dams. The Army Corps of Engineers had to come out and do stuff to keep these dams from overflowing. Now, again, like I say, on a lower level, people don't know, and others are compartmentalized. Some guy may be flying his chemtrail sprayer. And he is told that because the electromagnetics of planet Earth are having problems, he's spraying chemtrails to save humans, to keep out deadly rays from the sun and cosmic rays. That's what they will be told. That's how they will be compartmentalized. They'll say it's a secret project. You still can't tell anyone, but you're doing it for the cause of good. You're here to save lives. You're spraying those chemtrails to save the lives. So they don't really know. They don't, it's called compartmentalization. They have you build a tiny one part to a system that takes 20 parts. A different group builds each part and then one group assembles those parts. So only one group knows the purpose of building each of these separate parts. Only until it's assembled do you know what the, the end result is and that's very select who is allowed to know that. It's called compartmentalization. That's how they do it. That's how the Army can, Corps can kind of respond and DOD can respond to Fukushima. But on a higher level, I am convinced there are officials participating in this conspiracy in this criminal cartel. It's a global criminal cartel. I call them the consortium. It's a group of transnational corporations. They have all the money. They're the bankers. They have the technology. They have control of governments. So if you look at this particular one at Fort Calhoun, again, it's almost a perfect storm like Fukushima. Let's look. By the end of 2010, all dams had storage capacity available for spring runoff. Between March and April, the mountain snowpack accumulated to an all-time high. Again, we're breaking records right now, like never before. And they want you to think it's climate change, but if you read back from the 70s and the 60s, they knew that spraying nanoparticulates in the atmosphere in the form of metal particles caused global warming, and there's a greenhouse effect. It was a green. They knew that in the 70s. The idea is to slant the science, to subvert and pervert the science, and to indoctrinate a brainwash to distract this massive group of people so they simply don't know they still believe that these hurricanes and all of these earthquakes are natural phenomena in fact they must be getting quite concerned thinking that the end of the world is near right last two weeks of april high rainfalls increased the inflows to the river to near record levels a year's worth of rainfall received in two and a half weeks you know i read an article on weather manipulation weather control and it said there are rivers of moisture in the atmosphere. 
and you only have to divert and control those and to rain that down in such a degree that flooding flooding is an amazing weapon you can use and again I say all of our nuclear plants are sitting ducks we have no national security we are in the worst possible position this country has ever been in period end of story and if you don't believe that you have not done the research you have not been reading throughout May and June the Corps of Engineers announced increasing releases to historic levels so the Corps of Engineers had to go in and start letting the water flow or was it going to overflow if they didn't and so they did their best to uh, manage it as best they could again some people are really responding to these disasters in earnest they're real people that want to help they joined FEMA or the army to actually help people but they're compartmentalized or oblivious to it on the lower level it's somewhat a, my fear is this folks if someone in a single room with a group of people in a single room would have control over these technologies nobody else would know about it it can easily be suppressed and easily be hid considering compartmentalization and considering the fact that the technology probably now relies on the satellite based system we're gonna look at that in a minute too and it's probably very easy for a small number of people now to control an extremely advanced powerful technology okay it doesn't take thousands of people to activate the earthquake machine or the volcano machine whatever it is it doesn't it will be computer based it will be downsized it will be made centralized and more powerful as the technology advances and eventually one day a guy at a computer is going to punch in the coordinates and there will that's where the earthquake will happen that is our greatest fears I'm giving you excellent evidence that that is in fact the case a criminal cartel on planet earth is doing exactly this a summary of 2011 flooding Fort Calhoun station shut down to commence a scheduled refueling outage May 23, in response to rising water levels along the Missouri River, Fort Calhoun station operators began implementing flood protection measures. June 6, Fort Calhoun declared a notice of unusual event in anticipation that the Missouri River level of the plant would reach 1,004 feet. The NRC augmented the resident inspector staff to provide around clock coverage. Flooding action levels 1014 feet mean sea level, licensing basis flood level. That's what it's licensed for. 1,009 feet technical specification shutdown level. When it hits that, shut down. 1,004 feet abnormal operations procedure shutdown level. So when it starts reaching those particular levels, they know to shut down. Conditions on Fort Calhoun site. Let's see what they did with this weaponized weather and deluge of water. They attempted to flood the dams. Who's doing this? I can't tell you exactly, but I have every reason to believe that part of our government, part of our industry, part of our corporations, part of our power structure is involved in this global cartel and this conspiracy. I mean, I mean, seriously, folks, one day before Fukushima, they're all meeting, having their exercise. Think about that. Think about that. Omaha Public Power District initially built sandbag berms around the switchyard control houses. Earthen berm was built completely surrounding the switchyard. It was this huge berm they had to build up because the water continued to rise. It was record breaking. They've never seen this stuff before on planet Earth. I tell you, it's planet X and all this other nonsense. But again, I can actually prove it. Planet X was coming, folks, and the governments had knowledge of it. They would have many years ago began systematically shutting down these nuclear plants, knowing that massive grid failures, massive tsunamis a uh, half mile high would have caused complete and utter destruction in the form of a doomsday cloud when all these plants melted down and all these radioactive clouds and plumes vented to the atmosphere. Where would it go? Planet Earth, right? In the atmosphere. It don't go anywhere else. They know that. So if they had had prior knowledge of some massive celestial event, governments of the world, self-preservation is key, would have begun to take steps. They'd still have an energy monopoly. They'd switch to something else. They'd still screw us. Don't, don't think they wouldn't. Okay, but that's why I'm telling you, I don't think that any of this events on planet Earth is cosmic or related to the end times or whatever. It is simple technology. Any technology advanced enough appears as if magic to a lower level society. I think that's what Asimov, Isaac Asimov said something like that. And it's true. If you don't understand, most people don't know how their TV works, let alone their computer. That's just a fact. It really is. So they can easily be taken advantage of with the technologies they don't know and they don't understand. Water-filled aqua dam installed around power block to provide better access and protect the turbine building. On June 25, 2011, the river level at Fort Calhoun peaked at 1,006 feet and 10 inches. Boy, they really flooded. They reached the level they needed to reach. On June 26, 2011, a small front-end loader ran into the aqua dam puncturing it. You know, 
when I read that at the time, and I recall back to this perfectly, I thought to myself, that's no accident. That is no accident. I mean, if you have an earthen berm and you have this a cover, a rubber cover over to protect it, you just don't bring a forklift near it. I mean, you know that. You know that. And if this is a typical incompetence of these plants, like I say, national security, hey, throw that out the window, people. We have no national security, period, in the story. Failure threatened the normal transformers and caused plant operators to disconnect from off-site power. So my suspicions are this. This was a weaponized weather attack. When they got it really close, but it didn't, wasn't quite enough, and they were pretty much tapped out, a guy punctures the dam. And what happens in that? Normal transformers go out. Okay, and, and this, folks, I'm not a coincidence theorist. I'm going to keep saying that. NRC entered monitoring mode of emergency response. They were prepared in case something happened. Failure of Aqua Dam, licensee's pumper truck for backup cooling water was partially submerged. Look at that truck. Look what's happened. This is weaponized weather at peak capacity. It's very damaging. It's almost untraceable. It's a lot of circumstantial evidence you got to put together to make your case and say, ah, more likely than not, these are the guys doing it right here. More likely than not, this is their method that they're doing it. Actions by plant workers kept water out of the normal transformers. Water entering a manhole quickly made its way to the intake structure and threatened the raw water pump. So it, we had a, again, this was super close to a massive meltdown here. Most of you will not even remember this. It was so incredibly suppressed at the time. The only information I could get on Fort Calhoun was such was the media blackout. It was a website in France and it didn't exist a month later when I tried to go back. And I, fortunately, I screen capped some stuff out of it. It was a website from France was the only place I could see just how flooded Fort Calhoun was. There's a no-fly zone around it, just like in the BP oil spill. Just like in the BP oil spill. Summary, unprecedented snowfall combined with well above average rainfall. Water levels on site were below licensing basis flood levels. Fort Calhoun remains shut down. Very close, folks. Very close. Licensee taking action in response to confirmatory action letter. Had Fort Calhoun melted down. With the media blackout in place, we would have been told nothing, nothing. They would have minimalized it. Okay, this next screen capture is from my video. Okay, and this is from back in June 23, 2011, when I uploaded it. Harp targets Calhoun and Cooper nuclear power plants. And this was an incredible bit of information I got off of the satellite. And you look at some of these weird patterns you see, and our suspicions are they're using some kind of electromagnetic weaponry to exacerbate, to intensify the storm. I do not believe they can create necessarily a storm out of thin air or a hurricane out of nothing. But once a system is already there and has arisen, they can intensify and direct that system. And that is a piece of the puzzle, the only one that fits and answers all the questions, every one of them. I strongly recommend that you watch this video and look at my evidence that I documented back in 2011. The next screen cap we're looking at from the Air Force Force Multiplier owning the weather by 2025. Now we know they've had plans to own the weather, to control the weather. Every military wants to do it around the world, everyone. And here's their satellite based system. And I tend to think now my suspicions are with the number of satellite launches by the Pentagon out of Cape Canaveral, Florida over the years, it's a system of weather satellites is in orbit. Okay, maybe HARP's still up to doing stuff, but I think most of what's being done now is through the system of satellites that's centered around the planet. It's global in nature, as you can well see from this screen cap. This is from 1995, folks. And in 97, Cohen makes a statement about remote volcanoes, remote earthquakes, and look what the future has brought us. Look what the future. It's not climate change. It really is not, folks. In fact, we know of an ongoing Russian and American plan, U.S. plan over the years, to melt the polar caps on purpose. Intentionally, there's a book called The Cooling by Lowell Ponte. Please read The Cooling by Lowell Ponte. It's virtually a history of weaponized weather and weather attempts to control the weather. All the lawsuits from the flooding and the people that died here in the United States now, historically. Okay, next screen cap from the Air Force, owning the Weather Force Multiplier by 2025. You see their whole system, what they want here. I mean, this is a visual, this is what they're shooting for. You look at the global satellites, the computers that process that information, the person at the computer terminal, like I say, our biggest worry is finally one day in a room with 10 people, they can control all this. And then everyone else is cut out, compartmentalized. It's very secretive, very secretive. You will not know what's going on. You have the airplane pictured there. 
Okay, those are the ones spraying the chemtrail. Four, employ WX Mod tools. That's the uh, the aerosolized aluminum particulates that they're spraying that allow them to inject energy into the atmosphere, into these storm systems, and indeed intensify the storm system. And directing it is a whole nother system and methodology there. They are able to intensify, and they, they're very clear with what they're trying to do in this particular uh, Air Force manual that they put out back in 1995. They want to control the weather. And in Air Force Force Multiplier, owning the weather by 2025, the Air Force they're very open about what they want to do and it's it's quite an eye-opener if you have not read this and I'll try to link into this video as well so you can dig into that because in that particular uh, manual it says that the twice in there I'm pretty sure it says that the great thing about weaponized weather is it's virtually untraceable there's no smoking gun there's no bullet evidence it is virtually untraceable I have to assemble a massive amount of circumstantial evidence to be able to make my case now Let's look at a screen capture from the NRC Freedom of Information Act documents. Now, not necessarily pertaining to Fukushima, but I found this in there. And this is this just an eye-opener, incredible bit of evidence here. And this is out of a list of Q&As, question and answers. It says, any quick hit info about how the Southeast reactors performed during Katrina, Hurricane Katrina? What damage did the floodwaters do? Any power loss? Question mark. It says reactors performed as designed. Additional technical information. This would not have been public information, what I'm reading you now. The public information was that response, reactors performed as designed. But the additional non public technical information says this Waterford 3 near New Orleans did not have damage to any safety equipment during or shortly after Katrina. So on and so forth. Riverbend Station, 30 miles north of Baton Rouge, did not experience damage to any safety related equipment, only minimal damage. Also, here's the really good part. Of course, I, I'm pretty sure Katrina was also weaponized, intensified, and directed. And my contention now is these attacks, a lot of them are directed at our nuclear power plants. Like I say, we have to shut them down because they're sitting bombs with a payload capacity far beyond what a missile or plane can deliver to a target. Okay, this is very, very serious. There's a movie called Dr. Strangelove, which I recommend you watch. It's an amazing, interesting, funny uh, um, moving movie that you should watch it, it addresses some of these points okay let me let me read from this also in 1992 the eye of hurricane andrew a category 5 hurricane passed directly over the turkey point nuclear plant the plant was shut down prior to the hurricane making landfall and an assessment of the plant following the hurricane demonstrated that the plant sustained very little damage and all of the safety equipment was intact Parentheses, most of the damage was to the security fences being blown down. So you might have a security problem during a hurricane, right? Anyone could come on in there and do whatever they wanted. But the main thing we get out of this particular piece is if you look at Katrina and you look at Andrew, again, I'm giving you guys, you conspiracy scientists, more evidence that they are weaponizing. Who's doing it? I can't tell you names. I can kind of have an idea, okay? It's the establishment, it's the consortium, it's transnational corporations and bankers. There's no nations anymore. It's just a huge group of super rich guys trying to screw everybody. And they're using eco terrorism to bring us to our knees and force us to capitulate to their Agenda 21, to their new level of control. You know what's coming, folks, and it's through weaponized weather. This is exactly the case. And I'm convinced of it now when I found that. Hurricane Andrew passed directly over Turkey Point. Again, I'm not a coincidence theorist. Waterford, Riverbend Station, Katrina, I'm convinced some of these have multiple purposes. If they flood the city, they don't care. But the real target, ladies and gentlemen, are the nuclear power plants. Just like in Hurricane Sandy, which I proved the chemtrail planes sprayed, they intensified. It was a record hurricane. At the same time, all the disinformation controlled opposition outlets did not report on it. I even made a video that said, hey, there all these people that claim to be talking about chemtrails, they're not reporting on that Sandy was sprayed by Kim Harold Saeed did, chemtrailsplanet.net did, okay, but like nobody else got it. And when I put that video up, it went off. People copied it. It got a lot of play and a lot of publicity because they recognize that someone is remaining quiet on what I am talking about in this video. Okay, and I'm providing you guys actual evidence. Here's again another screen cap from the NRC FOIA documents. Tsunamis, it says. Large undersea earthquakes often cause tsunamis. Pressure waves, which travel very rapidly across oceans and become massive waves over 10 meters 
high when they reach shallow water, then washing well inland. The December 2004 tsunamis following a magnitude 9 earthquake in Indonesia reached the west coast of India and affected the Kalpakkam nuclear power plant near Madras, Madras, Chennai. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. When very abnormal water levels were detected in the cooling water intake, the plant shut down automatically. It was restarted six days later. Here is another instance, that 2004 tsunami. And if you look into this, there's a whole bunch to learn about the USS Francisco, a mine layer that was damaged that same day. Okay, And if you look at this, here is again evidence that that particular tsunami, earthquake and tsunami, now we're getting familiar with this, 2004, 2011, hey, how are you guys feeling about your future right now? I'm telling you right now, this consortium, this massive global conspiracy is trying to use weaponized weather, remote earthquakes to bring this globe to its knees and under the control of that one particular faction. I'm providing consistent evidence time and time again that I do not believe this is coincidence. Okay, this next screen cap I have is from the uh, Project SEAL, which is the UK, Britain, uh, United States... Um, research into a tsunami bomb or series of tsunami bombs that they when they were blasting coral to make a, a larger um, place for the boats to come in they noticed that at certain depths and certain charges they would create a large wave up on the beach and the guy says hey why don't we use this as a weapon and build a tsunami bomb we could flood a whole coastline okay this was back in the 50s in the 50s these are declassified documents from the 50s in fact on one of these let me read to you Estimates for the second Bikini atom bomb trial, large-scale operations. See, I think in this one, they're, they're using TNT and dynamite and what have you, but they're already considering the possibility of an atomic charge to create a, a tsunami, an artificial man-made tsunami. That's what Project SEAL was all about. And again, it's from the 50s. It's that old. It's that old. If, they, if that technology could have been perfected, it's long been perfected. Okay, here's a screen cap from an article. And if you search this, there's a whole bunch of stuff out there. Now, there, this was a very well-written article, very well-written that made an excellent case that the USS San Francisco was doing something other than just churning around in Indonesia when that tsunami earthquake went down. The guy makes an excellent case. It's too much information for me to go into now, but know that there's a number of well-written articles that point towards that event and say it was man-made. It was no accident. And we have a lot of evidence to that. And here's a summary of the Project Seal, which you should read down. It's very interesting. And, you know, again, it just adds to this circumstantial enlargement. Now, of course, the fact, I mean, fact, that we had Japanese, quote unquote, utility execs in the NRC control room during Fukushima. That's a fact. That is not circumstantial. That is not a guess. I'm providing you proof, and you'll get the link to that document. Again, like I say, conspiracy scientists, take this and run with it. Run with it. Okay, and that pretty much sums it up, folks. And I told you this was going to be a blockbuster shocker because when you review my evidence, and you guys probably have a lot more evidence yourself to add to this, it is such an incredible uh, uh, load of information. We need to begin to get someone in official capacity to investigate this premise that a criminal cartel possessing technology that we do not fully understand is using that technology in the form of eco-terrorism as William S. Cohen said in 1997 that many years ago folks and I tell you now they perfected it and they're using it in a systematic repeated a method and a pattern to do what to bring us to our knees and force us to capitulate agenda 21 so on and so forth right think it through think the possibilities through and do the mind experiments Spend some time contemplating on this. Put some videos up and add to the evidence for me. And, and I'll throw this in. If you guys follow up on this and do a video, you can most easily reach me on Facebook, Patrick Penry. Okay, send me a link. I want to see your vids. I want to see anyone else who's looking into this and posting anything up on it. I'm very keenly interested in your work and what additional information you may have that I don't have. Like I say, I, I can't tell you that the Sandy Hook was a hoax and no one died. I can't tell you about the Boston bombing. Not the details of it. What I can tell you is it seems to be a pattern of a drill or an exercise running either a couple days prior, the day prior, or on the same day. This is not once, twice, three times. This is many, many 
times, culminating, ladies and gentlemen, with the Fukushima disaster of 2011. Following that, here in America, we had the Anna Power Station, and we had Fort Calhoun. Okay, and I'm going to end on that. I thank everyone for joining me on this special edition of a Conspiracy Science HP News Network special broadcast. You guys have a great day. Patrick Penry, over and out. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video. And, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.